Curve sketching. These are just kind of what some of the common curve sketching will look like. So just make sure you kind of have a rough idea of what e to the x looks like, what ln x of looks like, and understand what their domains are. So e to the x right, uh, can't be negative. Uh, ln of x, uh, the y value, uh, can't be negative. Those are inverse functions. And then you know x squared, squared of x. So just if you just understand and have a basic idea of how these functions look like, that should be good. OK, so the steps to go through for sketching. First thing, you want to find the domain of the function. So that is where the x, of x or where like it exists, essentially. Um, and then you can check how will that graph look for large x and small x. That's kind of unnecessary. And then you also want to find the x and y intercepts. After that, you find any horizontal asymptotes, which is when you take the limit as x goes to positive infinity or as x goes to negative infinity, or vertical asymptotes, which is where the limit of f of x goes at limit as x goes to something goes to infinity. So this is basically where the denominator uh, would equal zero. So, but um, you'll do that with one side of limits to understand whether it goes to positive infinity or whether it goes to negative infinity, and then. You can also, once you find the roots or the uh, horizontal uh, x-intercepts, um, you can test whether or not on either side of them the function is positive or negative, and that will just help to give you a better picture of the function in its entirety. Step two, you're going to take the first derivative of the function, and then critical points are where the first derivative equals zero. Singular points are where the first derivative does not exist. Both of these are potential for local min or local maximum, or global min, global max, but it's not for sure. So just like for a cubic function, if I go back here, yes, there is a, um, the like horizontal tangent line, but then the function just keeps increasing. So that's actually not a local min or a local max. So just because you have a critical point or a singular point, that's not enough to determine whether or not it is a lo local extrema. Um, which is basically saying if it's a local max or a local min. Once you have these critical points and singular points, you're gonna, you, um, like an easy way to do it is plot them on a number line. And then essentially, you're testing values on the left and the right of each of those kind of roots, per se, um, critical points and singular points, whether or not it's positive or negative. If it is positive, you know that the function is increasing over that range. And if it's negative, you know that the function is decreasing over the range. So Let's say that this is 0 and this is 2, you can, or negative 2. You can just test negative 1. And then you know that whatever value that returns of the derivative is going to be constant between these two roots. OK? Um, yeah, so then make sure, also don't forget, where the derivative does not exist can be a local extrema. So make sure you're putting that on your number line. It's not just where the first derivative is 0. It's also where the first derivative does not exist. Once you determine that, that's where the function is increasing or decreasing. Next step, take the second derivative. Again, find where it's 0 or also where it does not exist. Because again, that is a potential for an inflection point, which is kind of what we're looking for. Again, you're going to plot it on a number line. And then you test the negativity once again. If it is positive, it's going to be concave up. If it is negative, it's going to be concave down. Um, and then you can combine those with what you know before. Put it all together, everything you know, and attempt to graph the function. This is kind of a table that you can look at. So basically, if you think of a u and an n and cut that in half, those are the four possibilities for what your graph can look like. A function can cross its horizontal asymptote, but as it gets very uh, small or very large, so to negative infinity to positive infinity, it'll approach it, but it cannot cross its vertical asymptotes. And then if you're always stuck, you can always just test a few points. So you can test, like, oh, what will negative 3 pi by 4 look? What will negative 2 pi by, um, like, what will the points look like? And then you have points of reference that you can connect to help with your sketch. That is always a foolproof plan.